after we've taken care of calories, calories probably account for about 50% of a diet's success. Now we have to take a look at macronutrients, protein, carbs, and fats. And the ratio between those and how many of those you get per day is the next big step in the puzzle. It's not a detail, it's super important. So for example, you say, calories will get me jacked, and you eat exclusively Twinkies to get your calories. You have almost zero protein in your diet, you'll get super duper fat, and you'll lose a ton of muscle at the same time. It'll be amazing. <laughs> Anyone want to try it? <laughs> Bad idea, right? So you have to concern yourself with protein, carb, and fat amounts, actually in that order. Protein is the most important nutrient for body composition. About a gram per pound is probably the top end of how much protein most people need. 0.6 grams per pound of body weight is at the bottom end of what you need for maximizing body composition. For health, you need weight less, okay? So if you just want to be alive, you need barely any. <laughs> so somewhere around one gram per pound is just a simple number to remember. I'd say 0 0.8 is a good start for most people, but who the fuck's gonna count 0 0.8? I can't do mental math. You guys, I was, whoever was at the bench station, I was trying to add up weights on the bar. There was a 65 pound weight, and I went, I don't know. But I didn't even know how much weight's on the bar. So a gram per pound is not going to be, there's no such thing as a protein toxicity if you have healthy kidneys, so don't worry about that. A gram per pound uh, is a probably a pretty, pretty good place to start for a lot of people and just a real simple rule to remember, all right? Protein is super important because it literally composes your muscles. It's a, it's a building block. With carbohydrates, there's an absolutely massive range of carbs that are appropriate based primarily on calories and physical activity. So if you're physically very inactive, if your life consists of lifting and being a lawyer or something, or a computer programmer, if you're a computer programmer, you sit and do this. You don't need a whole lot of carbs. Your workout lasts, it could be two hours, you still don't need that many carbs. How much glycogen can you really burn training three days a week in powerlifting? Not much. If you're someone like Alex Biata, you run all the damn time, you train like 18 sessions a week, he needs like an infinity amount of carbs, okay? <laughs> so carbs are based on training volumes, and the general recommendation is one gram of carb per pound of body weight to about three grams of carbs per pound of body weight. If you're a serious CrossFitter, and you train multiple times per day, 10 times per week or something like that, you probably need to be in that three grams per pound. And that's a lot of carbohydrates. So if you weigh 200 pounds, that's a big ass CrossFitter. Um, 150 pounds, that happens, okay. So if you weigh 200 pounds, that means 600 grams of carbohydrate per day. Anyone ever try eating 600 grams of carbohydrate? Yeah, you look at brown rice and you're like, fuck this. <laughs> Go to hell, brown rice, you're not my friend. So it adds up, right? And on the other hand, if you're a power lifter who isn't super totally active, you can be eating as low as one gram per pound uh, per day. So you only get, you know, 200 grams of carbs per day. So then you walk by and see someone eating cookies and you're like, give me those cookies, right? So there's a variety of, of, uh, of acceptable intakes for carbohydrates. What I want to tell you guys today is if you go too high and your calories are in order, that's really not a big deal. If you go too low on the carbohydrates, how many of you guys are into CrossFit in general? All right, uh, carbohydrates for performance in the now and over the course of a week are more important than protein as far as fueling badass workouts, recovering from badass workouts, and having even more badass workouts. Carbohydrates are not to be taken too low. A low-carb diet is not for athletes. It's for soccer moms who want to do a diet fad and lose five pounds of water weight or something like that. I'll get to you in just a second. So, CrossFitters. Whatever carbs you're eating now, if you're doing paleo, paleo is a great <coughs> basic start to a diet. Tons of really healthy food. Add in healthy carbohydrates, more brown rice, sweet potatoes, fruits, vegetables, that kind of stuff, and you will experience a slow and steady elevation in your training performance. Plain and simple. It's gonna make a really, really good change, and they're not poisonous, I promise. As long as your calories are set, you increase your carbohydrates to a more sustainable level, your performance will be enhanced. So if you're an athlete, if you're a CrossFitter, if you train a lot, eat plenty of carbs. Close, try experimenting with that two grams per pound range. So if you weigh 150 pounds, 300 grams of carbohydrate is a good place to start. If you feel good and train well, keep doing that. Low carbs are not for athletes. They're for bodybuilders. <laughs> okay, that's a little jab, bodybuilders not being athletes. <laughs> LOL, I'm a bodybuilder. <laughs> so if you're a performance athlete, you know, what, what the hell is a bodybuilder's performance component? Stage. Good on stage. It's all, it's all I can stage. do that like drunk or half asleep. <laughs> right? But CrossFit, you show up to the games, they're like, hey, climb this fucking rope. And you're like, what? what? I should do stuff? Right? You need carbohydrates.
because carbohydrates build up your glycogen stores. Glycogen stores are the number one go-to fuel, especially for CrossFit intensity and duration events. All right, don't low carb. Question.